Today we're going to talk about three potentially dangerous tools that can get you in trouble when turning wood bowls. Hi, I'm Kent, and today we're going to talk about three potentially dangerous tools you really need to be aware of when you're turning wood bowls on the lathe. Now, why are these tools dangerous? A lot of times people come to wood bowl turning after they've started doing spindle turning. It's real common for somebody to get a lathe and do some spindle turning and use spindle tools to do those turnings. Well, spindle tools are great for spindle turnings. Some of those spindle tools aren't great for side grain wood bowl turning. So let's take a closer look at in grain versus side grain turning. All right, so we have to understand the difference between in grain or spindle mounted blank versus a side grain blank. Okay, this is a, an end to end grain blank. And as you can see, the grain is running from the headstock to the tailstock and it's parallel with the bed of the lathe, okay? Now, bowls can be made this way. However, it's not very typical. Hollow forms are a lot of times made and turned this way. Bowls aren't as much. Typically, if you've got a pith in the wood and most wood species, the pith area or the center of the, of the wood itself cracks, is very prone to cracking. So that's one of the reasons for avoiding in-grain turn bowls. Also, again, depending on the species of tree, you could have very porous in-grain at the bottom of the bowl, which makes your bowl, your bowl basically like a sieve. So it's not the best orientation for turning a bowl, but it can be done. Most bowls are turned side grain with the grain running sideways through the piece. And let me illustrate this a little bit differently. Okay, we've probably all seen one of these, right? Well, this would be in grain mounted, an in grain mounted blank from headstock to tailstock. This material is very even going around here. So the spindle tools have very little stress or effort that they have to do to cut through this material because this, this material is very consistent all the way around. Okay. Now, when we're turning side grain bowls, the orientation of the wood is this way. So no longer do we have this, this really nice peeling off effect. Instead, we have relatively easy to cut side grain. It's almost like whittling as we go across that. And then we get into end grain and then we're full on 90 degrees to the end grain. This is the hardest cut for a tool to make. And then we come back out of it, we have side grain, then we go back to end grain and so on. So there's a lot more stress put on the tools when we're turning side grain bowls. And the majority of bowls are turned side grain. You get the best results as far as the, the look of the grain and be able to see the wood really well. And there's a lot of benefits to turning side grain wood bowls. However, it is very stressful on the tools to be hitting end grain, side grain, end grain all the time. Here you can see this, the grain direction and how that, we have ingrain, side grain, ingrain as the wood goes around. Let's take a look at the first tool that's really gonna cause problems for us. All right, the first tool that we wanna be aware of is the spindle gouge. The spindle gouge is designed to cut into that side grain, such as in a spindle end-to-end -end turning, and it does a great job of that. And this is really good for making coves and beads when you're turning an ingrain spindle piece. However, on a big bowl blank like this, if you try to remove large amounts of material, for instance, if I were to try to come around the exterior of this right now and shape this or core out the interior of this bowl with a spindle gouge, there's a good chance I could bend this or cause even more damage to this tool and or myself. This tool is not designed to remove large amounts of material. Now, the bowl gouge is the ideal tool to be using to be taking material off the exterior shape and to core out the interior. The spindle gouge is not used for that. Now, that being said, there are some things on a bowl that you can do with a spindle gouge. For instance, I like to shape and form the dovetail portion of my tenon using a spindle gouge. The bowl gouge, because of the angle of it, doesn't allow me to get down into the, into the depth of that dovetail to the very bottom and really clean out that point so that the four jaw chuck will mount cleanly to that. So this is where I use the spindle. Now the spindle, the spindle used in that situation is not under much stress. We're basically just making a small minor cut. 
Sometimes one of the other things I do with the detail spindle gouge is I'll create like a bead or some kind of detail work around the rim of a bowl, and that's fine. Those are light cuts. They're not, they're not typically removing large amounts of material. So that's the spindle gouge. So the next tool that we really want to be cautious about and most likely never use on a side grain bowl is the parting tool. Why? Well, this tool is designed to make peeling cuts. And a peeling cut is essentially up at an angle, this tool will peel away material. And it's just like that roll of toilet paper. This material in this orientation is very stress-free for this tool. There's not much force on this tool when it's peeling this material away. However, when you get into a side grain bowl and you come around the side, which is an easy cut, and then you have in grain, that's very forceful for this tool and it's gonna smack this tool down. And what happens a lot of times, people will start making a push cut into here, which is super dangerous because the tip's not cutting at all. You're just scraping in there. The, the ideal orientation of this tool is upright and it makes a peeling cut. It literally peels material away, but it will not peel away material on a side grain wood bowl because you're going to keep hitting these ingrain sections and that's where you're going to get in trouble. And that's where this tool becomes dangerous. Also, when you get down into the depths of a bowl with this and you're way off of the tool rest, you potentially are going to get a grab, a catch, and it's going to pull it into the piece. Do not use parting tools on side grain wood bowls. All right, here comes the most dangerous tool to use on a side grain wood bowl. This is a spindle roughing gouge. Absolutely never use this to rough out or take any material off a bowl. Don't even use it on a side grain wood bowl blank. Why? Well, what's gonna happen is this tool is not designed to handle the stress of that ingrain. And if you get in a particular situation where if you're potentially extended over the tool rest too far, things of that nature, this shank and the base of this shank will literally snap off. I've heard stories that there are videos of this happening on YouTube. However, I really don't wanna see those, but it's something to consider. This, this tool is designed for spindle turning. It uses very little force. Again, it's very much like the parting tool in that it, it uses a peeling cut and just comes right across the top, makes a really nice, simple peeling cut. And it works wonderful on end-to-end -end mounted blanks or spindle mounted blanks because it's designed to just peel away the material. Think again of our roll of toilet paper. There's very little effort that's used removing layer by layer as this rotates. However, when it comes around and has to hit ingrain, that's much different. The ingrain is very dangerous with the tool. So absolutely never use a spindle roughing gouge while turning a side grain bowl blank. So you might be thinking, so what tools do you use to turn a bowl? Well, believe it or not, the only thing you need is a bowl gouge. You can do it with one bowl gouge. It is very possible. However, multiple bowl gouges help. So for instance, I use a larger width bowl gouge to remove rough material and shape the, the bowl. I will use smaller bowl gouges to really get in there and make some fine detail, very smooth, clean cuts. And I will use the spindle gouge when I shape the tenon of my bowl. But that's pretty much it. Those two tools, a bull gouge and a spindle gouge for the tenon only. Very light, light work for the bull gouge or for the spindle gouge. And it's not being put under much stress in that situation. Again, no roughing with the spindle gouge. Absolutely do not use the parting tool on a side grain bowl. And whatever you do, never, ever, ever use a spindle roughing gouge on a side grain bowl wood bowl. Now, that being said, there are side grain bowl roughing gouges that are out there. And the way you can tell the difference of them is they are solid. The, the, the steel is solid into the handle and there's no tapering. This tapered part is what makes this weak for side grain bowl turning. For spindle work, there's almost no pressure down here. All the pressure's up here at this point and on the tool rest, it's just a very easy 
side grain spindle cut for this tool. However, when you get, keep getting hit with that end grain, this, this tool has a potential to break at the base of this where it's small. Now, if you find them, they're not that common. There are a few companies that make the bull roughing gouges. You're gonna see they're big and beefy because they're gonna have a great big handle because this entire metal tool is solid all the way down. It does not taper and it goes all the way into the handle. They're big tools. In my opinion, they're not necessary. You can do all of that work with a decent sized bull gouge and save yourself the headache. So there you have it guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you guys turn safely. And if any of you are using these, stop using these tools. You're gonna get hurt or you're gonna break some tools and damage some stuff. Don't use them, okay? And now you know why. It's because of that ingrain that's coming over the top. It's gonna cause problems for you. So if you like this video, do me a huge favor and click the like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribing. How could you not be subscribing? I've got all kinds of great videos for you. And uh, like I always like to say, until next time, happy turning.